All right, this is the last thrip flip video from my trip to my favorite thrift store, the SPCA of Brevard County, where I found this really, really cool vase. And I'm gonna give it a little makeover, a little coastal magnolia makeover. Let's hang out and do it together. So let's get the boring stuff out of the way first, but it's the most important step, and that is how do I attach this thing onto my tumbler trimmer? Well, you know what? I'm just using pool noodles, and it works out just fine. And now I just need to clean the glass really well, make sure I don't have any fingerprints, and then somehow weight down the opposite side of the turner so that it doesn't flop around. For this project, I need a silicone cup for my resin, sticks to stir, and then deciding on what colorants I want to use. And I'm going to use mica powders, some alcohol ink, and a liquid resin dye. And also cups to mix in each of my colors. I have everything laid out that I need. So I am going to start mixing in my KS Resin Liquidy Split. I'm going to use 40 mil or 40, yes, 40 milliliters. And apparently I forgot to talk throughout this whole video. So I am going to do a voiceover, which probably is better because I tend to forget to talk when I'm shooting a video because I'm so focused on the piece that I'm making. So part A, part B goes in the cup and I'm going to stir it up. I'm using five colors for this project and I'm going to be pouring the resin into the little cups and then whatever is left over in my cup, I'm going to be using that as the fifth cup. So the first color is going to be the KS Resin Liquid Resin Dye in Turquoise. It's my absolute favorite, favorite color. And I'm going to put, trying to put the tiniest amount and I can't ever get like half a drop. So I'm just putting a tiny little bit on my stick. I want it to be very translucent. So the second cup is going to be the Sesso Silver White Mica Powder and I'm just putting in a tiny little bit. I just a little residue in that cup. So this is going to be about an eighth of a teaspoon and the cup's gonna tip over. There we go. Always put your lids back on your mica powders. Uh, and then the Sesso mica powder in aqua, another one of my favorite colors. Again, just the tiniest little bit in there. Put the lids on so you don't have an accident like I had before and I dumped out almost an entire container of mica powder. Then the fourth color is going to be the Sesso gold mica powder. Again, just a tiny little bit. It's about an eighth of a teaspoon. Now I'm splitting the resin into the four cups and I'm going to reserve a little bit in the cup for my fifth color, which is this really beautiful uh, opal alcohol ink from Pinata. I've never mixed alcohol ink in to resin before, you know, as a colorant. So this is a first time for me. We're gonna see how it goes. So I'm reserving a little bit in the cup. You wanna shake it well because the color tends to run all the way to the bottom. And here is a lesson that I learned. Make sure you don't pour too much. Oh, sh I guess I thought I was pouring hazelnut coffee creamer where more is better, but in this case, it's not. But I stir it in anyway. It's thin as heck but we're just gonna go with it. We're just gonna go with it. Well, sometimes you just gotta go with the flow and just deal with it. I've never mixed in alcohol ink as a colorant to resin. I know I put too much in, like I know this for a fact, but I don't know, I lost my head there for a minute and it's okay, we're gonna use it anyway and hope for the best. It's probably gonna affect the cure rate of the resin, but you know, I'm just gonna go with this. Make sure you're mixing your colors really, really well, especially when you're using mica powders. Mica powders can get clumpy and you can, you know, you may, you could end up with dry spots in your resin and that's going to translate into fish eyes on your glass. So when I'm stirring a cup with mica powder, I'm always scraping the bottom, I'm scraping the sides and then scraping my stick. 
I love using these Sesso Mica powders because they, especially this white one, it has this really pretty pearly hue to it. The, the gold is very shiny, but it doesn't have a pearl effect. The aqua also has a, a really pretty pearl effect too. And all right, I'm going to start with the aqua at the top, get my turner turning the right way. This glove is a little bit loose. I think it's an extra large, my husband's. Get a paper towel handy to wipe my glove between each color so that I don't blend too much. And now we just start applying the resin and I'm going to alternate the bands. I will be wiping my glove between each color so that I'm not blending too much. So let's get this party started. I'm speeding this up to literally save you from the boredom of me just applying the resin in alternating bands. And I really should have put a paper towel or something between the glass and the pool noodle just so you could see the colors really come to life. Because really the only one you're able to see is this white and then the gold at the bottom. But, um, you know, it's just alternating bands of resin. And I know I'm trying not to blend them too much together. I'm trying not to add so much that they just sort of naturally migrate into the, the band below. But... You know, it is what it is. I knew that was gonna happen, and unless I have a barrier, that's gonna happen. All right, the last color is the um, the very thin <laughs> opal, and I'm just, I mean, it's like water, y'all. It really is like water, but you know, it is what it is. I'm hoping for the best. Okay, finally was able to take my sticky glove off, and now I'm going to just put a little bit of heat on it with my heat gun. I have it on a low, temp setting and high air and all I'm doing is just running over it real quick to pop bubbles. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it but I want you to see it in real time just so you can see um, what I'm doing. All I'm doing is popping bubbles and I am holding on to that cord because I do not want it to touch my base in any way. So this is all I'm doing. I'm just hitting it real quick. And now I'm going to take the leftover gold, which I have a lot more of this than I do of any other color. I am just going to paint on some accents with the gold, just using my stick. And it's nice that the resin is a little bit thicker now because it's been sitting for about 10 minutes. But the KS Resin Liquidy Split is thicker uh, and it's a facet resin, so it's going to be thicker anyway. Um, I do have a great discount code in the description below the video if you wanted to use that code and get yourself a 10% discount. So all I'm doing is just adding a couple of stripes with the gold just to accent different spots. I'm trying not to be too, too chunky with it. Um, using the stick to kind of spread it out, that's a good idea. I really like that. Where else? Trying to get every little bit out that I can. And it seems that I have some white left over too, so I'm gonna do the same with the white and just add some smaller stripes of white. Always did love a good stripe. It's not as even as I had envisioned. You know, like in my head, I had envisioned that these were going to be perfect stripes, perfect bands of color, but you know what? Sometimes you, you just have to go with it. It's not, an, it's not a mistake. It's a happy accident. Didn't Bob Ross say that? So yeah, it's not exactly what I had envisioned, but the end result, I really, really love. It's quirky. Just the shape of the glass itself is quirky. The colors are perfect for my house. I mean, I have a lot of blues. It's very coastal. I love it. I love it. Bye, friends.